I'm Daniel Ginaldi, professional footballer at Maidenhead United. Came through the academy system at Chelsea, West Ham, been at Barnsley, been at Dartford, Margate, and then currently at Maid Maidenhead now. I've also studied alongside my football. So I've done my A-level, it's got A and A-level psychology and also have a first class degree. And today, I'm going to be telling you all about life beyond football. So I started playing football. <laughs> this is the, the staple question, eh? How did it all begin? Well, for me, it started in Ireland. So I grew up playing football in Ireland. I actually started before playing football, I played Gaelic football in primary school when I was younger. So, but I started playing football when I, when I was around seven years old and I followed my, my older brother to training. Um, and they needed a goalkeeper. So went in goal for them in training and I enjoyed it, done well. And then I ended up signing for my own local Sunday league team. And then around 2014, my family decided to relocate over to England. And then, you know, I wanted to go directly straight transfer from that like, Irish academy to English academy over here, but it didn't work out as planned. So when I moved over here to the area that I lived in, I played for my local district. Um, for a good few months and you know, I was going and going, enjoying it. We were winning quite a few games, we were doing well. We went on a little cup run. And then one day we were playing a team and I think we, we ended up winning like 2-0 or something, but I actually assisted in the game. So, so I was just showering after the game as you do on a Sunday. And then my brother just comes in and he's banging on the door, he's banging on the door. He's saying, bam, 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 bam. You got, you got Sky by Chelsea, you got Sky by Chelsea. And I was just like, no way. I was just like, nah, stop it, you're capping, man. Stop it, you're capping. Like, I didn't believe him, I just went on, continued showering and everything. He's still banging, you got Sky by Chelsea. And it wasn't until my mum came in, you know, they were banging on the door, she came into the um, <laughs> the bathroom, she said, yeah, you got Sky by Chelsea, you got Sky by Chelsea. I was just like, wow, I was. I was so gassed, I ran out. I was just like half naked, <laughs> ran around all around the house. I was just screaming. I then was called up to play for England internationally at, at under 15 level, which was phew, amazing experience. Yeah, so I progressed on, had some amazing experience, amazing development zone in the academy at Chelsea. And then moving on the years, I ended up getting released. I actually started crying in the meeting and I was just like, wow, like, it's, it's quite deep because that's how, what it meant to, um, obviously the, the amount of work that parents put into their sons, their child's experiences in order to, in order to help them make it. Me and my agent and my family decided to sign for West Ham. So I signed my scholarship at West Ham, um, my pre-scholar at West Ham. So I did my transfer from Chelsea to West Ham in the December of, um, I think it was December of 2017. So then, you know, it was going really well. You know, after signing for West Ham, I was playing under 18s as a under 16s, doing my thing, and you know, just continue to develop as a goalkeeper. And then, bang, I I done my knee. I I tore my MCL ligament two days before. I was supposed to play in the FA Youth Cup as a, as a first year scholar, grade two tier in my MCO. It was devastating. Just knowing that the, the prospects that were there, the different opportunities that I, would, I was gonna end up missing, Youth Cup, there was potential opportunity for me to play for Ireland in the under 17 Euros at that time. These different opportunities, but I missed out on them. The thing that really helped me during that difficult period was the fact that I was studying so I was studying my A-levels, my A-level in psychology at that time. And it helped me have something else to focus on. It's helped me to switch off during that difficult period and really concentrate on something else and put my energy into something else whilst I couldn't play football in that, in that period of time. So it's something I'm really passionate. So my education was what I had beyond football to help me. 89% of footballers who come through the academy system by the age of 21, they're not playing football anymore. 50%. Another statistic for you. 
50% of professional footballers who, who play in the Premier League, play in the EFL, have caps and caps, have played internationally. 50% of those players end up bankrupt or even divorced after they retire from football. There's been so many stories of, um, oh, I can't remember his name, Wes Brown, David James, all these different stories of players who, you know, focused solely on football, had some amazing careers, but failed to develop themselves beyond football. And they had football as their sole identity and didn't, you know, put more of their eggs in multiple baskets. So that's why I'm so passionate about what beyond football is. We want to ensure that everyone has that second plan A, everyone has an identity beyond football, whether it's a passion project turned into a business or whether or not it's um, just something, a skill, another string to your bow, so that when you retire, we have a career engine injury, you have something to fall back on. You have something to get you up in the morning. So that's why we, we, we can't. I've, I've gone through a series, a period of time where I had football as my be-all, end-all. And I can only say it was, you know, one of the worst experiences of my life. Because I was, I was coming back home from training, had nothing to focus on. I wasn't playing during that period of time. It was tough. It was tough. I had nothing else to, to give me a sense of purpose in life. And, you know, it can get really, really bad mentally. It can get very depressive. It's a, it's a lonely, isolated state that you can be in. So that's why I'm so passionate because I felt it. I felt it. And that's even why I'm, I created Beyond Football because hearing stories, especially the one of Jeremy Winston. Jeremy is a, a player who I grew up playing against when else he was man, at Man City and when I was at Chelsea. And he too, he was released at under 16 level by Manchester City. But you know, after not finding a club, after a couple of months, I found it difficult. It's an experience that a lot of players find themselves in. But Jeremy ended up committing suicide and taking his own life. So that's what drives me. That's, those are the different things that makes me so passionate about Beyond Football and what we want to do to, to help players. Because it's just, it's, it's not only beneficial to have an identity beyond football, but it's possible and it's, and it's so necessary for your entire well-being. At the company that I've started now, after you know two years of running the podcast and my channel, the central mission is to ensure that every footballer who comes through the academy system or who plays football has a second plan A and is, is more equipped to handle life beyond football. And they're, they're, they're more than a footballer. So that's our mission and that's why I'm so passionate about it and that's why we want to keep on pressing on. But it's great to be back over here at West Ham where it, where it all started. I've actually played in that stadium, you know. So, so I'm gassed, man. I'm gassed.